Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. you're watching Israeli News Live. I'm here in Jerusalem on Mount Zion, and of course, I keep bringing up this whole issue about Mount Zion, and the reason I'm doing, friends, is because what's happening in this country, what has happened in Israel's past, uh, is only shaping the future here and some of the most evil things that are going on that it's important that you realize what's happening, why it's happening. Uh, now, before we get started here, I want to take you guys to the book of Micah. The Lord really began to deal with me on some things here. And of course, Satan has done what he can to disrupt me from getting this information out to you already. But if you go to chapter 4, it's very interesting what Micah says there. But in the last days it shall come to pass, the mountain of the Lord, excuse me, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord, into the house of God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth out of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now, What's interesting, this is a prophecy of basically the millennial reign. But there are forces in behind the scenes that is trying to bring this to pass without the coming of Yeshua, without the coming of the Mashiach, without the coming of Jesus Christ. This is what's happening in the background. Rome is the one that has been, been set, they've set up their kingdom, you know, almost 2,000 years ago. After they stomped out that true believing uh, Christians of that, of that era, they, they got up, they set up their empire there, and they have moved forward with, this, with the Roman Empire uh, trying to bring in a, a false kingdom. And, and even when it comes down to the scriptures there in Micah, they are still trying to bring to pass their own kingdom way their own millennial reign and the only way to do it is to fake a millennial reign and this is one of the reasons why very soon in the near future they are working with the Jewish people here on putting a third temple up on the Temple Mount not where the uh, the Dome of the Rock is but there where there's the olive groves there just off if you were looking uh, say from the eastern gate, it'd be over to the right-hand side. There's a big olive grove right there. In fact, I shared that with Brother Paul Begley the other day. We went up there, showed him and his family there, my wife as well, and they saw that big olive grove in there. That's where they're planning on building the third temple at, and there is a lot of push for bringing it together. We even saw the World Peace Center right there over the door of the rabbi's, uh, uh, the rabbi that's over uh, the tomb of David. It's called the World Peace Center now. That's a big change. All the placards have been changed in there. What's going on right here at Mount Zion? It's a major takeover of Rome. Esau is trying to bring about his own kingdom here and push out the Jewish people. But it's not God's plans for this place to begin with. And God will make sure that it's brought about the right way. But unfortunately, the evil side is going to prevail for a period of time. All right, so let me take, I just shared you that with there, that in Micah, but I want to take you to Obadiah and share with you something. We've talked about this many times, but let's just get a feel for this because we're talking about Esau again. In chapter uh, 1, verse 6 of Obadiah, he says, How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All right, so Esau has some secrets. And by the way, God said he hated Esau and he loved Jacob. All right, and he, and he also states in the scripture that, that, uh, that Esau has had a perpetual hatred for his brother. So, but when we look at the scriptures there, it looks as if there was a reconciliation between Esau and Jacob in the natural back years ago. But it's a spiritual battle that has continued on down through the ages and is still going on to this day. Now, God identifies Esau uh, back 2,000 years ago as the Romans, as we see in the book of Obadiah, when you get down to the 10th verse, when he speaks about, actually in the 9th verse, where he says, uh, and, to, and to the end that everyone on the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. 
Now he's going to be cut off, but the question is, is where is Esau going to be in the last days and where is his mountain going to be in the last days? In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that strangers carried away uh, captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them, Esau was. Well, who entered in to the very gates of Jerusalem in the, in the times of the second temple period and, and caused all this havoc? It was the Syrian army along with the leadership of the Roman general Titus. They were under his leadership and he did stand aloof on the other side while he used the Syrian army to do all the dirty work. Right now, but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. That identifies it was the house of Judah at 70 AD that clearly identifies the time period. Right? Also identifying Esau as the Romans perfectly. The prophecy is so perfect. Okay, neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yes, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Their menorah they took away. You see, and all the other temple treasures that they could get their hands on, they took away. See, they entered in after the Syrian army did all their dirty work, then they entered in. But see, God has identified the Romans as being the one that did it. Now, here we are in modern days, and it does speak about that they're going to have their own mountain. And we find out that here and behind me, here on Mount Zion, Obadiah uh, continued to be fulfilled. And I want to share more of that with you. Let's drop down, friends, to verse uh, 16. And in verse 16, we find out, For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. In the Hebrew language, that first part of that verse right there is in the masculine plural. The Pope of Rome comes here to Mount Zion, goes in the upper room, which I wouldn't have anything against him going in the upper room. It's a Christian site. But the thing is, as you got to remember, in 2013, David, uh, excuse me, Israel had given the Pope of Rome an official seat at the tomb of David. It was in Israel National News. I've shared that with you guys many times here before. But what does he do? He puts on his triple crown, sits in the upper room there, and participated in a communion service with only men there that were present. He was officially declaring himself to be the Mashiach and was declaring that these were his disciples that were with him. And Obadiah had prophesied that more than 2,000 years before it ever even happened. But then it goes on a little further and it says, and the nation shall continually drink. And that happens to be and gender inclusive in the Hebrew plural. And they did from that day forward, they began to do communion services more. I don't know if it's still goes on, but they continue to do several more. It was gender inclusive. Both men and women participated in it, and they were doing it even to the point where they brought in special forces, removed the Orthodox Jews from, their, from the King David's tomb, which was totally a disgrace that they did this, and they went and co uh, conducted a communion service in there. And now recently, when I came here myself and I was in the tomb of David, I, I am Jewish from Mother, father, my whole family were all Jews all the way back. But I come in there and now they have an Arab delegation inside the tomb of David. What next is going to happen here? We are seeing scripture prophecies being fulfilled one after another. But friend, it gets even more interesting. I begin to see by God's grace things that I had never seen before. All right, so let me share some of that with you. Verse 17, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Now the question is, is what is their possessions? Some of us might think of the temple artifacts. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I don't think that's exactly what it's speaking about. We'll see though. But anyway, there's going to be deliverance. Deliverance from what? All right. Okay, verse 18, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire and, and the, and uh, excuse me, 
I got, I got, I wrote some notes in between there. Let me, let me pull that one up right here on the, on the Bible that I have open here. All right. So uh, we have, okay. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord hath spoken it. Now Esau is the Romans according to Obadiah when he indicts Titus, the Roman general, clearly in the scripture, but we're talking about 2,000 years later by the time we get to verse 16 and find out who's the very guy drinking upon his holy mountain with an, a, ma a male-only delegation fulfilling scripture. It's the Pope of Rome that did that in 2014 during his Passover uh, ceremony that he did there, uh, or his Easter ceremony. All right, so, but watch what it says here. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame. What is that spirit? Speaking about, remember though, the last verse speaks about God sends deliverers upon the mountain of Z Mount Zion to, uh, okay? And what is that? That is your two witnesses. Well, it's interesting though, the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame. Does it not say in the book of Revelation chapter uh, three, I will give power unto my two witnesses. Uh, uh, and going on down to verse five says, and if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth. See? Fire proceed, if any man try to hurt them. So see, they both have that gift like Elijah did to bring that fire down out of heaven. They both seem to have this gift here. And we're finding this out exactly according to Obadiah's prophecy that it's going to be a, that, that, uh, that the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame. So they represent both houses of Israel bringing deliverance to his own people here. All right, so it's interesting how this lays out, how Obadiah's prophecy is fulfilling right here in modern times here. See, and another thing, uh, let's, let's take it on down to where Obadiah, where Obadiah speaks here, uh, getting down here to, let's see, and they shall, and, and they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain, the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. Now watch what happens here. And the captivity of his hosts, the children of Israel shall possess the Canaanites, and even the Zarephath, and captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sepharad, which by the way happens to be the very north part of Israel, showing that they would end up Israel would be back in their own land, having all the way up to the top there, shall possess the cities of the south, and saviors or deliverers shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. As I mentioned to you, clearly the prophet of Obadiah is identifying Mount Zion as the mountain of Esau. Why? Because the Roman Catholic Church has come in here just like it was 2,000 years ago, and, the, and Israel was under Roman occupation. They have come in again Again, we're under Roman occupation. They have turned Mount Zion into the Mount of Esau. Now, all the, all the, the, the Orthodox brothers that I speak to here, they're afraid to speak about it. One man comes out and declares to me, there's already peace. We have peace now. There's no problems. And I'm sitting here at the Wailing Wall with a huge delegation of Arabic people. And I'm not against Arabic people. Nothing against the Arabic people whatsoever. But it just seems odd to me that they're all down at the Wailing Wall. But you have to remember, what are they going to do? They're dividing the Israel. They're going to divide Jerusalem. They're going to give the east part to the Palestinian people. And they're going to get what? The, all the Temple Mount, which they already got control of it anyway. And they're going to get the Kotel. This is why they're sitting there bringing them in and, and lecturing them on, I guess, how they're supposed to conduct things and what they're supposed to do to, to keep peace and security. Friends, you're seeing the Bible being fulfilled. The Pope of Rome declares he will not retire. I'm telling you, something is about to give loose. They're going to build a third temple. They're going to try to bring forth a, a false millennial reign, and they're going to put somebody in there as a false Christ. And friends, I'm telling you, that is not good. My Jewish brethren, I, I cry out to you to wake up, read the prophecies of the prophet. Don't go with this Roman ideology. Get away from it as far as you can. God commanded Moses when he comes not to make any covenants. That's in the book of Deuteronomy, I believe the 32nd chapter. And you know that he's coming again. Even, even some of the great sages, Rashi pointed it out that the, that the early sages had said when he says, Asherah, Ladonai, ga, ga, oh, ga, ah, I, will, I will sing that I've gotten victory over the horse, you know, over the sus, 
and over his rider and, and that they've been hurled into the sea. One horse, one rider, not 600. God is sending those two witnesses very soon to deliver Mount Zion from the Romans who have turned it into a mountain of Esau. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live right here in Jerusalem at Mount Zion, a place that at one time the brother of Yeshua himself, Jesus himself, James the Just, had his church right in behind here. Got some interesting information coming up soon. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Watch my wife's channel, Rise Up Children of God. She's got some interesting things in the days ahead to share with you. Shalom.